Hey everyone, Larry Chen here. We are at Future Collector Car Show and I'm going to do a walk and show you some of my favorite cars. I'm gonna to talk to some of the owners. I did a feature on this show last year, but this year I brought my own car and of course, luckily, it's parked next to the HKS R33 demo car. I just did uh, the stage. I'm gonna park this, I'm gonna walk around, and then I'm gonna talk to a lot of the owners and show you some of my favorite cars here. There's a lot of them. This is a very good quality car show because it's curated. You can't just enter and just park your car. You actually have to get approved to park your car on the lawn here. Because it's associated with Bear Jackson, it's so much about quality, amazing cars, amazing builds, amazing stories. So here we go, I'm gonna park this next to that beautiful HKS R33 demo car. Now I'm parked back here next to the HKS R33 demo car. Thing looks great. Both of these on Yokohama tires, these are on 8009s. I don't know what these are. Are these AO52s? Oh yeah, these are AO52s. Plenty of grip for all the horsepower that this thing makes. So we actually did more of a complete walk around about this vehicle at the SEMA show this year. So check that video out. Last year you guys brought a machine gun to a knife fight with this R35 GTR race car. Yep. But this year you stepped went it up a notch by tenfold, I would say. So what is this? What are we looking at? So this is a factory built uh, Nismo GT3 car. So it starts off as a GTR chassis. And before they do any of the interior body work, whatever, they just take the bare chassis and they roll it over to the Nismo race shop and uh, they go to town on it. It's all built by hand, uh, carbon fiber body, uh, two wheel drive, transaxle, air shifted. It still has a GTR motor, um, but it's all built up with forged internals and stuff. And then all the safety stuff and all the requirements for FIA uh, homologation. So this car has been raced all over the world and is still eligible for several more years. We can race it until 2029. Okay, so then what year was this? This is a 2018 model, which is the newest iteration of the GT3 car. Incredible. So then this is factory race car from Nissan. Yep. This is the thing I love about factory race cars, the fit and finish of everything, all the door panels, the cage, everything is so clean because it's from the factory this way. So incredible. The seat is really, really nice. Wow. So do you drive this on track? Yeah, definitely. We just got the car a couple of months ago and we took it out for a quick uh, shakedown run. And then we're gonna go back out again this week and uh, really start leaning on it, so. Where, where are you taking it? Podium Club, which is uh, just outside of Phoenix a little ways. But from our old race car, this is a big step up. I mean, it's a lot faster, obviously. Uh, the brakes are way different. The steering is way different. The handling is quite different. So we're gonna need to put in some hours to really get up to pace with it. So then what are you actually going to race? Are you doing time attack or what are you doing? No, our, our short-term goal is to run um, an SRO series called GT America, which is for AM drivers. So uh, we're kind of thinking that's our next logical step up from club racing to get into a pro series, um, but at the same time not be competing against full pro teams with you know, huge budgets and all that. So then does that mean you have to put restrictors on this to run with no. all the SRO? So people? SRO will actually send us a tune for the ECU. So they do their balance of performance and they know exactly you know, everything about this car from the FIA and they have a tune file that will load into the ECU so it makes the, the kind of power they, they want us to make. So then, uh, has there been any other ones competing in SRO? Yes, there was one uh, last year ran by a team called Valkyrie, and that's the only other one of these in the US. There's two right now, and they've kind of changed directions. I think they're gonna do some GT4 racing this year. You gotta love that. Nismo, Vinplate. Amazing, GTR Nismo, GT3. I, I can't believe how far back the motor is. Yep, so basically um, the motor's been dry sumped, so there's no oil pan, that's how they get it down. 
There's no bell housing and there's no front wheel drive in this car. So it's pretty wild when you take the un, uh, floor panels off under, under the uh, car. There's literally just a yoke and a drive shaft bolted to the end of the crankshaft. So when you start this thing up, it's, it's almost has a throttle response like an F1 car because there's nothing attached to the engine. So when you blip the throttle, it's just, I mean, it's crazy. So the transmission <laughs> is still in the rear, like the regular yes. uh, GTR. And all but the accessories no, are back there too. And then, but there's now there's no torque tube coming back. Correct. For the front. You got it, uh, exactly. It's just one drive shaft front to back, all sol solid mounted with a carrier bearing. Nothing super fancy, but yeah, the, the motor's hard mounted, the trans is hard mounted, nothing on this car moves. There's no rubber so is pretty this, much anywhere. Is this still a 3.8 liter? Yes, yep. So it's got forged internals and uh, custom you know, valve train and stuff from Nismo. Um, but otherwise it's still factory engine block, factory throttle bodies. And then you know those slightly upgraded Nismo turbos that they also put in the Nismo road car. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no Pick way. Pick up those stickers. Which we love. Sepan, that's super cool. The history, it's racing history has been really Suzuka, Suzuka, Shanghai. Shanghai, wow. Fuji Speedway, where we were just last week. Yeah. That is so neat. So then, did this race in Macau then? Yes. Yeah, because that's like a standalone event. It's yeah. not part of a series. Right. And I think that's just across the water from where the team was located, so. I can't believe it was based in Hong Kong, out of all places. I know, crazy, right? I couldn't imagine seeing this even in like a race shop in Hong Kong. It's like out of place, completely <laughs> out of place. You know? I haven't been there. You would know. Uh, so cool. I can't believe how intricate this carbon work is. Oh, yeah. And if you look, you know, so a lot of these pieces, but especially the fender, mm -hmm. this is several different carbon pieces, right? Yeah. So see these little shaved rivets? Yeah. It's like, that's one piece of carbon. This is one piece of carbon. It, um, and I'm wondering if it's something where it's easier to replace that way or it's easier. No, it's a manufacturing thing. Uh, I think it's easy to manufacture it in several different pieces because, you know, this is such a complex design that trying to do all this and put it in an oven would be a little bit more it's tricky. So complex. I mean, there's just so much going on. I'm sure they did all this wind tunnel testing. Oh yeah, and the underside of the car um, has a lot of complexity as well. So I'm sure you've seen cars with like front diffusers mm. under the splitter. Yeah. So this one has the the diffusers you'd normally see in front of the tires, but there's also one big one in the center. So really, the whole front splitter is shaped like a wing. <sighs> So I, I just love that this is in private hands. These aren't raced by Nissan anymore. No, no. These are actually just all privateers now. Correct, so um, Nissan North America is really focusing on their GT4 program with the new Z car. And then in Japan, they're really focused on Super GT with GT300 and GT500 factory cars. Yeah. But I don't think Nissan's doing much factory stuff with GT3s anymore. It's crazy because this was designed to run for 24 hours straight. Yep. Or yeah, more. and it's, it's done a few 24 hour races. Are you still able to get any of these parts from yep. Nismo? Yeah, so still full factory support. Um, that was one of the first things I did when I got the car. I got in touch with somebody at Nismo. You give them the VIN and you know basically prove that you own the car, and then they set you up in their system so you can order all the parts. Um, I've got an engineer I can email back and forth and ask questions and stuff. So. Definitely, you know, helping out the little guy. <laughs> it would definitely be a lot easier if you just got like a Porsche GT3, huh? Yeah, I mean, I think in North America here, um, there's better brands to go racing with a GT3 car, but we're just such R35 fans that we, we kind of had to get this. That is. I mean, it's not any faster than a Porsche or better or whatever. When so, you get into GT3, like the overall format of the cars are all pretty similar. I mean, Porsche has their kind of rear mid-engine situation, but otherwise, a lot of the parts are the same, you know, like these hubs and brakes and stuff are kind of the same for every brand. So let me ask you, do you have a R35 streetcar? Uh, well, so we have that one, and then uh -huh. actually, yeah, my wife, uh, it's not here today, but she's got a 2014 track edition. Oh, okay. And that one's super clean, super stock, uh, streetable, you know, Sunday fun, cars and coffee, whatever. Yeah. Um, we've taken it to the track a couple of times, but when you got other toys like this in the shop, I mean, 
Taking Why would you cars. want a regular street <laughs> Nismo or T spec if you have the the top? This is the tippy top. Yeah. So then, in this configuration or the configuration you had a chance to test in, yeah, how much power does it make? Uh, about 600. So I don't know. There's minimal drivetrain loss, maybe 550 to the tires. In a straight line, it's no faster than the old car. Um, it's when you get on the brake pedal and when you turn into a corner, you feel the immediate weight difference because this is a thousand pounds lighter. This is 2,800 pounds versus 3,800 pounds. Wow. You could <laughs> so, just carry so much more speed. Exactly, yeah. We got to recalibrate our brain in terms of those apex speeds because it's a, you know, quite a, quite a difference. That is really neat. Thanks so much for bringing it. I, we're going to make somebody upset right now by starting this. <laughs> Wait a minute, so then this one, you don't need to hook it up to a warmer or anything to no, start not, it? not to start it. Okay. Um, the gearbox is supposed to be up to temp before you really like get on it. Got it, so that's like, put it up on air jacks, right. run it through all the gears. Exactly, just to warm up the fluid and make sure everything's good, but we're not gonna put it in gear. It fits. Okay, cool, so grab the wheel and just pull the quick release and slide that back on. This is so neat. <laughs> so then over on the right, hit the uh, red kill switch. It's the square button. This one. Yep. So that'll turn it on. And then let the dash come up. Yeah. And then just keep your foot on the brake for like yep. safety. Got it. Trying to go anywhere. Yeah. And then hit the ignition switch, which is on the left. Uh, just up? Yep. Okay. And then hit the starter. <laughs> Hold on, let me grab this. Unreal. We're definitely gonna make somebody upset right now. This is unreal. This is so cool. Wow. I could not imagine driving this in anger. I was already blown away at this thing. I spent a bunch of time here looking at it, but I didn't know you owned it. Yeah, it's uh, one of my other Corvettes. So what's the, what's the story behind this thing? Um, so this one is, it's a 1980, which is the same year that I was born. I always wanted a 1980 Corvette, and I have another one that I'm building for drifting with a 2JZ and all s swap uh, s chassis suspension. But I wanted one that was just like a like a regular street car. Yeah, but it's like all JDM'd out. Yeah, this is the way it is. This is not like a cosplay category. It's like like the American girl that goes to the Comic Con dressed up like Hatsune Miku. It's like the equivalent, right? Like American car pretending to be some sort of Japanese tuner car. Yeah. And uh, so I, you know, I had to, I wanted to get the, uh, like some wheels that nobody, nobody puts on, on Corvettes, right? Especially on a C3. Yeah, so how were you able to get the right size? Did it, you get them custom made? It was, no, so I got the wheels first and then I made them fit. I had to trim the frame to make room for the wheel because the, the, the wheels wouldn't fit. And I didn't want to put a flare to put the wheels out. So I was like, well, let's compromise the frame. Obviously we notch it and reinforce it and everything the way it should. Had to redo all the suspension with coilovers, conversions instead of the, the sway bars, the, um, not a, a leaf spring. You know, this, these cars came with leaf spring suspension. So all custom made trailing arms with Heims just to be able to camber enough, just to clear enough, you know, and, and it's, it's still, <laughs> still not there. That's it's, incredible. Thank you. I, dude, I learned, I learned to have so much respect for people who do fitment. I had no idea how complicated fitment it really is. It's, 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 yeah, it's, I, it's hard. It, it's amazing to me because I'm assuming this is probably the lowest you could go too, right? It can go a little bit lower, but then it starts rubbing. Like mm -hmm. the other side, you'll see the wheel is like the tire yeah. all smooth. Right. Yeah, you don't want that. No. But it, it sits so nice the way it is, honestly. Thank you. Huh. Thank you. So tell me about the exhaust. So this is like the most common, cheap, 
basic uh, header side pipe set you can get for Corvettes. And uh, it's like all four into one and it just sounds like, you know, it has, I have a little uh, resonator inside so it doesn't get too, too bad. But nothing really special. It's really like a $300 setup. It looks great though. I, but I, mean, I like it. it looks I think very... it matches the theme that you have going. I love thank the you, JDM play in the front. Because Cosplay. the cool thing about the C3 is there's actually a space for the plate. Yeah. I think that's kind of cool. You know, so when I see cars, uh, like for example, the, the FD Arc 7, yeah. and also like the R32, R34, when there's a actual space for it, I feel like it needs a plate. And, it, and, and what am I gonna put there, you know, like uh, my other car is a minivan or <laughs> yeah. something. Like, so kind of like trying to go with the whole theme, I was like, well, let's just put like some yeah. Japanese plate. And I love the Japanese inspiration on the inside, bridge seats. You got your grip royal, steering wheel. Uh, what, like, what is all this? Does this actually still works? Yeah, it's it? like a wireless uh, control for the radio. Ah. It actually works pretty decently. And, and then you actually drift this? I haven't drifted it, but I did the ASD Hydro. Kind of wanted to like basically set it up for drifting. Just haven't drawn, done it yet because there's still like a lot of little things I need to adjust. But you are building a 2J one of these. I have a different car that wants a 2J. It's a right-hand drive, S chassis, Wise Fab. I'll show you one day. Okay, I can't wait shop. to see it, yeah. So then, um, is the engine stock? It's just a stock 350 with a four-speed trans manual transmission, but it's all fuel injection uh, conversion with a Holley EFI. But I have an electric power steering pump. Kind of like to get rid of parasitic power draws, you know, and did electric fans. Nothing crazy, it just, it just goes, but... This is just so, gotta be such a fun car to drive. It, it is fun, it, it keeps you on your, on, your, on your toes because it's very unpredictable. It's not, it's not done right yet. So, you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it keeps you awake. Yeah, I love that. But it's not fast, it's not like... Oh and yeah. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber T-tops. Love that. What, what about this? So this one, when I bought it, it already had this wing grafted into the bumper. And actually, I really, I really, that's one of the things that I liked because it really added the, I, th I think that these cars are like are missing a little bit of the, of body work in the back. This one, it was already on the car when I got it, but it's not done right. You can see there's like a lot of like little, you know, like, like the paint's not the best. And yeah. They kind of like install it with like with wood screws. <laughs> when you go under the car, there's just like a lot of screws going through. So there's a lot of things I have to redo just to get it done right. But other than that, it's fine for just like a little weekend driver, you know? That's awesome. Well, thanks for showing it to us. I love your plate Thank so you. much. Love that. Some people get it. SR71. What does the V stand for? VET. Ah. Because there's SR71A yeah, and yeah, SR71A, yeah, but yeah, this yeah, is yeah. the V. I love that. So, so some cool. people get it, you know, like. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This is one of uh, uh, John's car, Slang 500, that we haven't had a chance to feature yet. But this is a Tesla swapped Mercedes 300 SL build. We featured many of his builds and his, Mercedes, the original one that he built, was actually the one that launched this very channel. I always love his build so much. He has so much attention to detail and a lot of people may not like his style, but that's the point, you know? He has his own very unique style that he's created and that he's really taken and ran with it. He's a big audiophile, so every time the interior is pristine and the audio is absolutely just insane every single time. So let's let's talk about your Toyota Hiace. So what year is it? It's a 1990, uh, and it's a 2.4 turbo diesel. So how did you, like, did you import this to the US? Uh, I bought it off of someone else who had it imported to the US. He was a uh, professor at Texas Tech, or Something like that. And this is something that you've always wanted or did you just uh, find it? I was looking for a car uh, and I had wanted a, a van so I could haul motorcycles around. And 
I saw this one on Facebook Marketplace listed as a Toyota 86, which it is not. What? That doesn't make any sense. Why nope. would it be listed as that? I don't know, but I saw it and I instantly fell in love. Then I drove the four hours to go and buy it. Okay, so then it's empty right now because you actually do use it to haul motorcycles. Yes. Then how is it that it doesn't ruin the carpet? Uh, so normally I have a rubber mat that covers the entire floor and then I have metal plates that go under the tires to keep it from uh, creating indents into the carpet. Got it. It, it doesn't really look like you use this for heavy duty. No. So then, do you have to put ramps on the yeah, back? Yeah, I have How does that work? triple wide ramps with uh, oh. two hooks that connect from the uh, underside. Oh, that's what this is. So there's hooks back here and on uh -huh. the other side, and that keeps the ramp in place while I drive up. That is so neat. And then how do you strap it down? Do you actually build um, some? So I use a bike mount uh, built by uh, bolted on, and so it clamps onto the two D-rings and then everything goes onto the D-rings. How does this drive with a motorcycle and everything? Very, very slow. Really? <laughs> yeah. What, like, what's the max speed? Uh, so top speed without a motorcycle is around uh, 83. <laughs> you know, you know exactly. It's not 84. No, it's not 83. 85, it's I, 83. I GPS'd it, it's 83. <laughs> um, Can we take a look at the engine bay? Oh, the engine is right here. Yes. Oh, is it easy to open? Uh, yes, it's just one clip. Oh, no way. Two oh, clips. I forgot that the high ace, the engine is right underneath. Okay. Right, and it's right there. I'll move Whoa. Out of your way. So does it get hot here? No. At least not to my knowledge. It's hot anyways in Arizona. Amazing. And everything works? Everything. 95% uh, of it works. The only things that don't work are like the electric curtains and the electric steering wheel going up and down. Talk about ahead of its time, this thing. Yeah, it has a intercom system from the front to the back from factory that still works. That is crazy. So uh, have you hauled around like all your friends with it, uh, with, with all the seats in and everything? No, because almost immediately after I bought it, I started hauling motorcycles. Uh, but I have been able to fit two full-size sport bikes with both of the riders in here. How? Where are they sitting? Uh, both of us sitting up here and uh, two bikes in the back. Oh, okay, got it. What a cool vehicle though. Y you just don't see them in this condition that often? There's one more in better condition over there. Oh, really? Yeah. For sale? Yeah, for sale. Oh, I wonder how much it's gonna go for. I have no clue, but that's the second highest I've ever seen. That, that's gonna be the indicator for yours to yeah. see how much yours is potentially worth. That is a... very, very cool. Have you done anything to fix anything on here? It did have a slight overheating problem and mm. that was fixed by replacing the fan clutch and the thermostat. Mm. And that was it. That's it, Toyota. That's it. Everything else works. <sighs> cool. Well, thanks for showing us your awesome high ace. Tim, love your RX-7. It is so clean. I understand that is, it's pretty much mostly original. Yeah, it is, it is. Original paint and um, yeah, the original, it's got 57,000 miles on the, on the engine. And uh, I bought it from a guy just outside of uh, Detroit, Michigan, about four and a half years ago. I'm the third owner. And um, yeah, all the mods on it are period correct. It had uh, the factory optional Almex wheels. You had to order those from the dealer. Uh, they're super rare. If you find a set online, you know, they're worth probably, you know, 7,800 bucks. And, um, and the guy was into autocross, and so he added a wing to the back and uh, did all kinds of things to try and make himself faster in stock class up in Michigan where he raced autocross. And um, how was the rust for it being a Michigan car? Nothing. Really? Nothing. Yeah. So it, he yeah. only probably drove it in the summertime. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he only dro drove it in the summertime. Mm. Yeah. So it was very well cared for. Yeah. So yeah. how long have you had it? Um, I've had it for four years. And um, I found it on Facebook Marketplace, believe it or not. And the thing that attracted me to it were those wheels because I, I had a Sonic Bronze 79 with plaid interior and I was looking for those wheels. So when the car came, it had gray uh, velour inserts in the seats. And um, so I got the, that's, that's a, um, a company called Jackpot out of Japan makes that fabric and the fabric is a copy of the original 79 uh, RX-7 plaid interior. 
Oh. So I ordered it from Jackpot, and just in the middle of COVID, Jackpot stopped producing the fabric. Oh. So I got really lucky and got it at just the right time. It's so, so clean. Yeah. So how often do you get to drive this? Um, I've got two RX-7s. I've got a FD, a CYM FD 93, and I've got this one. So, you know, probably this time of year, I drive it a couple times a month to car shows. It only has 57,000 on it, so it's, uh, it doesn't get driven a lot. But there's a big car show every year up in Williams, uh, Arizona. Yeah. And uh, I try to drive it up to Williams every, every year, and that's like a two-and-a-half-hour drive. So. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, thank you. I love the, pl- I love the paint. I love all the memorabilia. Yeah, is, is some of this stuff uh, that you sourced, or did it come with the car when you bought um, it? Um, most of it. Um, came with the car. I've been into Mazdas for a long, long time, and so um, I go to Seven Stock every year. And so I've got, I've got just boatloads of memorabilia for seventy nine eighty. Can you show me what's in there? Oh yeah. So the guy was loved to autocross, and so he'd carry this with him to autocross events, and it's got a spare set of stock. Spark plugs, it's got points, it's got spare bulbs. I, I love so, that. It's just like of period. Yeah. 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 That's yeah, super cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for showing us You're your welcome. car. Thank you, Larry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I was uh walking around and this actually stopped me in my tracks. This is what looks to be like a very modified MR2. Found the owner. What is this? All right, so it is a TRD 2000 GT. Around 35 of these were produced by TRD Technocraft in Japan in 1998. So this car is a 92 originally, turbo car, T-top, and owners were allowed to bring these back in 1998 and have them rebuilt by TRD into the wide body kit. Um, No way. Yeah, yeah. How, how did t- you find this? <laughs> so we were looking at the auctions in Japan, and I saw the body kit, and I went, wow, I think I know what that is. I remembered it from Gran Turismo 2. It was one of the original prize cars early in the game. No way. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. So okay. Went, oh, my gosh. I think I know what that is. I said I had to have it. I had to win it. And... Sure enough, it is. They're actually a special VIN plate for these cars that number them and say when and where they were manufactured. And this has the plate underneath the front bonnet. Oh, does uh, can we take a look at it? Yeah, yeah, sure. What the heck? So actually built by TRD in Japan. Built and painted by them, yeah. And, and uh, they repaint the whole thing and everything. Yeah, so it's uh, all the white ones I've seen, there's not a lot of info out here, have this pearlescent with like a blue hue when the sun hits it. There's a few modifications past what they did, but they did the front rear bumper, the wide body fenders, the wing, the trunk was actually extended on these. Now this one, the rear engine cover is not the correct one for this car, but I think it looks awesome. This is the VIN plate that no they got from TRD. Way. That is so neat. I've never I've never seen or heard of this car. I've never seen one before. Uh, it makes me wonder how many are left. Yeah, um, I think there's two others in the US. I've heard of some going to a few countries around the world, but I think documented on the internet, Less than 20, maybe a dozen. I, there's not a lot of them for sure. And this one found, it only has like 55,000 original miles. Do you actually drive this at all then? I drive it occasionally. I'd like to take it out to shows and little, it's seen a little bit of Canyon time. It, it's just wild to me that this is really was of the era. I, at the time, TRD probably thought, okay, let's just make this as crazy as possible and then this is what they came up with so then are these the wheels that it came with then so when i purchased it it had these wheels these are not the optional trd 2000 gt wheels but it makes me wonder if they intended on making more than 35. i think so but 
the original cost, when you look at them in today's dollars, well over $20,000 through the conversion. If you think about it, it was like a $20,000 car probably value then. It was really expensive to do this, right? So, right. So then at, at the time it was 20,000 with inflation is probably way more. Probably more, yeah, mm. yeah. This, so you're saying this hatch was not part of it? Correct, so it would have had the regular turbo hatch, but this is cool, this is how it came from Japan when we found it. Oh, oh, with all of this stuff? With the stickers. Super auto box. So then, what about the engine? Is it pretty much mostly stock here? This one is, um, it has the TRD exhaust that would have been an option. It's got an aftermarket intake. These cars, my understanding is they sort of do whatever you want to them. So some people brought naturally aspirated cars in. Some people brought turbos. This is a turbo. Some people asked for supposedly the rumors up to 500 horsepower of serious modifications from TRD these, from TRD mm. they basically put eight car in. I I don't know that for sure but I've read that on the internet this one is pretty pretty factory so uh, with the Supra they made a TRD 3000 GT which is the same thing as this but in a Supra that they mm. wound up coming out with the program for to celebrate that race success so it's bumper fender here side skirt rear quarter wing and, and the then trunk. rear bumper and the trunk was extended and also to fit it yeah what about the taillights so the taillights are aftermarket that somebody did in japan as is this panel normally uh. it would have the two cutouts but they didn't say mr2 like the 98 ones did they would be a, uh, just a regular one with the cutout reverse lights somebody over time changed that do you think you would return it back to 2000 gt like the, all that, original I, you know, I've thought about it. I found one of those panels, but I love the look of it so much. It looks so wide with the dark lights that the collector in me wants to do it, but the enthusiast, the car lover, I, it's just beautiful. It's automotive artwork, just the way it's set up with that hood. I, I have a hard time as a collector making that decision. Hmm. Thanks for showing us this. What, what a find. Daryl, I was walking around, had a chance to check out your Stagia already. Nice, what a cool car to have in the US. Yeah. So what made you want to get a Stagia? So um, before I bought this car, I had a pre-order on a Mark IV Supra that had an NA in it. Then I got in a motorcycle accident on one of mine. And I was like, man, some of the cars I was thinking about pre-ordering are a bit small. And then also like the chassis are like pretty limited as far as parts. So I decided to go with this one because it was a low mile. It was only like 40,000 miles on this and it was street, it was gonna be legal in like December. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You had a pre-order on a Mark IV? Yeah, what so year? I put like a deposit down. It was a import, right hand drive. Oh, yeah, okay, that's okay, okay, <laughs> all right. So Stagia, what, what year is this one? Um, 97. And yeah. then this is like a, a RB25. So this one, um, this particular one's a DayZ edition. So it has all the ground effects and it had the front end and everything. And then it has RB25 with the Atessa all wheel drive. And then as soon as I got it, I pulled open the ECU through some old school, like period correct HKS bits. So I have like an EIDS and a couple interceptors. Mm -hmm. And then I got Meister coilovers. I was one of the first ones with their kit for the stages. Okay, so then I have a couple questions. What do you mean about the front end? It comes with this front end? No, no. So it normally comes with a, a front end. So the stages are just like the Skyline GTSTs with all yeah. the variations. Yeah. So some of the front ends are a little bit more muted and they're not desirable for me personally, but they have ones that are a little more aggressive. So it was already like an OEM plus option. But um, then I built that one out to look real good. And then I was like, well, it's time for the change. So pulled everything off of this, cut it up. I actually had the whole front end in the back of the car. <laughs> oh, because this is the R34 front end. Yeah, yeah. So these are all OEM. I got this right at the Nissan dealer. Uh, so everything still has the part numbers, the stickers, all of it. You bought all of this stuff from Nissan? Except for the grills. They, I didn't like the grills that, you know, because the fog light grills, they kind of have the circle cut. I wanted to do like a hexagon all the way through because like a lot of new cars are running those. So I just kind of cut a little bit together. Can, can I see the rear? Oh the yeah, no, these things are you, huge back there. Wait, you, you have, why do you have everything in the back? Oh, I had it all in the back uh, when I was building it. 
Because I, I built this myself in a garage with my Oh, mother. I see. What yeah, you yeah. Okay, so I was just okay, in okay. my little parking right, garage, and it, I had it. front bumper, hood, some fenders. <laughs> it was a it was a fun thing to look at. Huh. But this it's like cool. over a six and a half foot bed over there in the back. So what are your plans with this thing? Um, right now I have, I'm gonna modernize it. So I have Willwood six pistons I'm testing. I genuinely threw those on last night. <laughs> but Just um, for the show? Yeah, yeah, cause I had a louder set for like track, but it just sounds like a train. I can't do it. <laughs> so I just threw some Brembo ones and then um, there's still a six piston with a less aggressive pad. So then still all wheel drive. Yep, still all wheel drive. Does it still have rear turbo. steel? Uh, no, steer? these didn't have the hick, uh, the uh, high cuts. Uh, no or rear steer. Mine's didn't at least. <laughs> yeah, this is like a series 1.5, so it doesn't have the Neo engine in it. Like in here. Can we take a look at the engine? Yeah, yeah. It's just little bits and pieces from HKS, but that's it. It's funny because uh, when I looked at it from the front, I was like, "Oh, there's an R34 here." <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then I turned <laughs> no. around from the back, and I was like, "Oh, it's a Stagia." It's like the cheapest way to get into that area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just RB25. Um, single turbo, of course. Then I just threw a little intake, got the HKS back there. I did size up the turbo, though. It's a Garrett GT28 something. So then how much power do you think it's making now? Three something. Like I don't, so the I'm limited by transmission right now because this is kind of my development car because I'm trying to get more into like adaptive racing and stuff. So this one's going to get either a turbo 400 or a, um, I saw one company in Australia is doing a, uh, M4 eight speed, dual like clutch. a ZF. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking about doing that and then running that route. <laughs> that would be really cool. Yeah, but it's, it's just more waiting on that. I'm genuinely limited to whatever the transmission can take. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know if you've seen this before, but mm. um, like I've seen Adam LZ on his Supra. Mm -hmm. He's able to like drift a Supra with mm. the the stock. ZF transmission. Yeah. Because he, he, essentially, like you put a clutch in it, yeah. and then you can actually clutch kick, and you can clutch in, and you can e brake, well, and all of like, that stuff. Because like you really only need it to go, especially even like I'm even down to throw a sequential box in it at this point. It's just whatever works to get me back on track. Because I was racing motorcycles and standard cars, like had a lot of real wheel drive chassis in the past, but it's just I I need something to be able to disengage it and let me kind of control it a little bit better. Because mm -hmm. right now I just drive with the left call it a day yeah no, that's <laughs> cool it's good time well i'm sure it feels special still to drive this here in the states oh yeah and i did this uh swap stateside which is not easy and i also decided to do a little different with the fenders so these are from garage kagotani and they're not around anymore uh-huh and of course with customs things get damaged in shipping so i had to shape things up and get it all back to normal but it's it's kind of like inspired from the Z tune. Yeah, fenders. so it's like a Z tune, and then they got a little vented area off there in the back. But yeah, it's, it's that's a cool. nice one. Awesome. And the rotiforms serve it well. These Thank fit really well in there. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for it. showing us your build. Really yeah, cool. Yeah, no worries. Awesome. <laughs> It'll look better next year. So every every week, and I'm throwing something else on it. So. Cool. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I actually, some... I want to make the comment. I love, love, love this paint color. Yeah. I've never. The Seen DSO, this yeah, this is like, I think um, in my production one from the Sager group at least, from what we saw, there's only like 11 in this year in that color. <laughs> no way. Yeah, so like it's very, it's pretty limited, but you know, it's hard to paint that. <laughs> also, I love the fact that you have a Volvo. I did, I did <laughs> that as a joke because everyone kept mistaking it for a Volvo. That is so So I was so like, yeah, I'll throw a Volvo box on it to really make it fun. It's a real Volvo box. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I really do have to say I love the paint. Yeah. I wouldn't be upset if you painted the whole car. Oh, no, I'm going to do that. I, it's hard to find a painter. Yeah, Last yeah. guy. So when I got it shipped in, it got damaged in shipping, and they had to repaint it three times. Just oh, the no. front fender and everything and try and match it. So I was like, we'll, we'll get a good painter, just go around, and I'm going to do the whole thing and get a whole new clear and everything. What a cool car. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Yeah, yeah. 63rd annual Indianapolis 500 official pace car. Love those wheels so much. I actually have always loved these Fox bodies. I think they look great. This one is um, very, very, very good condition. Very clean. Seems like a lot of special bits about this. I don't know too much about them, but I can respect them. I can respect a very clean, it seems like mostly unrestored car. Oh, I love the seats. 
Love those Recaros. <laughs> That's so cool. That's a lumbar support. You pump that up and it actually pumps up the lumbar. It looks like the both driver and passenger have, have those. Nice steering wheel. Very, very tasteful. These uh, Isuzu Via Crosses are very interesting looking. They've always kind of piqued my interest. They look very, very different compared to a lot of other vehicles. The design is interesting. A lot of plastic, but um, I think it looks really good with these black Rhino wheels. I think these are actual real beadlocks. I could be mistaken. I haven't even been here that long and I already made it onto a couple cars. Let's walk through the story. Okay. Well, how did you get this originally? <clears throat> so originally we became a Toyota family in 77 when we moved here from the state from Bolivia. My dad went into a Chevy dealership and they wouldn't give him the time of day. Latin American, strong accent, and they, they wouldn't talk to him. Short-tempered, he leaves. <clears throat> As he's driving down the road, he drives by a Toyota, Toyota dealership and he sees this bright yellow 77 Toyota pickup truck. He goes in and talks to the guy there and the guy's like, hello, Mr. Salazar, nice to meet you. Shakes his hand, how can I help you? My dad's like, this guy's giving me some attention. The guy gives him the keys to the truck and says, go take, take it out. And my dad's just blown away. He's like, at the other dealership, they wouldn't even give me the time of day. So to this day, I still remember him pulling up to the house in the pickup truck. We jumped in the back, because back, back in the 70s, you could jump in the back of a pickup truck. So we went in the back of the pickup truck, went to get a Dairy Queen or something, and then my parents left, came back, and we had a new pickup truck. I learned how to drive in that truck. My brothers learned how to drive in that truck. A couple years later, my, wife, my, my, my mom needed a, uh, a vehicle we got her a yellow 81 Starlet. So the reason I have this is because of memories. So back then, this was completely stock. And when we moved to the Midwest, it completely rusted out. I found one here in Phoenix and I got it for dirt cheap. But back then, about 20 years ago, you know, the beginning of eBay and stuff like that. So I could find some parts, but it was still pretty expensive. So I just stockpiled parts, the, the Japanese bumpers, the Japanese taillights, um, the uh, fender flares I got from a guy on uh, the forum back then. It was, it was uh, starlet.net, which I think, you know the, I think you know the guy. His name's Jonathan and he drives a, a Corolla. He's, in, he's a Southern California guy. See, he made the, f the flares off of uh, the original TRD flares that he had. Whoa, so these are actually modeled after them. Yes. Ah. So Jonathan Amazing. did that, and um, just little by little, I started collecting stuff, collecting parts, and then friends. You know, I had friends that, that did the paint job. I had friends that helped me with the motor. So and, uh, how much of, was there a lot of rust that you had to repair? No rust. Because it was an Arizona car. Correct. And then, so you took it down. Was it yellow originally? It was originally yellow. But Correct. it needed a repaint. Yeah. So then engine, obviously not stock. Where did you get this engine? The engine I got um, used a motor from Japan. It came from an AE-111 Corolla that's front wheel drive. Um, that's Japanese and European. So there's four individual throttle bodies and um, inexpensive uh, radiator. I mean, it's tiny. Uh, I took everything off there. So originally this car wet was, or a dry, I should say dry, was 1,500 pounds, dry. So light. So swapping the motor, stripping stuff out, dry, this should be about 1,600 pounds. Wet, probably like 18, but we're dealing with 170, 180 horsepower to real, real drive. It's, it's fun. I can only imagine. That is so cool. Okay, so then this motor too was never meant to be mounted Correct. this way. Correct. So then you actually had to do some creative. That's the only thing that I had to do um, back there was for to uh, relocate the distributor. Uh, and then, so what did you have to do with the transmission? 
Transmission's A186. A86, A86 five-speed. Yep. Love the wheels. Love that you have Yokohama tires, too. 175.50 13s. Impossible to find. I had to get them from a mini club. Oh. Who is... gets them shipped in containers from the UK. Wait, it's 175 squared? Yep. <laughs> that one's got a stretch on the back. It's got to be really hard to keep this on the road then, huh? Um, you know what? I had some Toyos on there that were a little bit stickier. These, these are a little bit more forgiving. The Toyos are just a little you know, twist of the wrist and you're over three lanes. Wow. And the, the wheelbase. Yeah, it's, it's so, so short. It's I mean, so you, short. you drove one. Yes. So, wow. And the interior is actually so clean. So is it original dash? Original dash, yes. What else have you done to the interior? Um, those, those are um, seats from a 2002. So they're Recaros uh. that I just had redone. Oh, they look great. So the cage is something you bought or you no custom made, made. so okay. a friend a friend i have um used to do the cages for bob Andron, mm. who is uh actually I, I think you've been to his shop okay future fab he's two doors down from uh from robles ah that is that's great and your car actually got pinned huh yeah uh hansel uh, did my my uh starlet and he did my Hilux pickup truck. Yeah, so Lean Custom, if you want to get one of these, Good I'm luck. sure they're they're <laughs> rare. I'm sure, I'm sure just like with me, a lot of people reach out to you asking yes. for the pins. So, and it's uh, got and it's got the fuel cell. Fuel and cell. And there's the uh, the cage right there. So then, do you actually take this to the track? Well, initially, that's what I wanted to do. Within those 20 years, everything just got more expensive. So, the bumper that I could get back then for a couple hundred dollars is close to a thousand dollars now. The front bumper. Whoa. Well, what about this? Do you guys Techno toy tuning. Oh, okay. I like, it, it really adds to the back of the Oh vehicle. yeah, it does. Let me take a look at this bumper that's a thousand dollars. It's metal. So it's a metal bumper with a filler and it's got the Japanese uh, fender mirror or fender uh, lights and then the caps. Huh. So you can get repops now out of fiberglass, but that's metal. Ah. What about this grill? S grill. Only only for the uh, never never brought to the states. Ah. I actually ended up getting that um, from a guy on Instagram who's in Russia. Oh, really? Yeah. This I I really like this detail. Totally like totally this is, totally eighties. This is something that you don't really see that often. Um, what about this? That's a guy that makes um, makes some uh, fiberglass fenders, um, hatch, and he's out of um, Portugal. So really international. Trying to find parts for these cars is international, and um, thank goodness for the uh, for the internet, because if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to build it. What a hot rod! So cool. It, it's it's fun. I mean, it's really basic really stripped down it burps and growls and and it backfires but it's it, it's fun so the engine itself is mostly oh, yeah. stock oh yeah uh, it's, it's the stock engine uh, except for the uh, the exhaust um then cleaned up the uh throttle bodies and it's got the uh, oem uh, ecu okay which i'm going to be changing out to a uh, standalone mm. And I'm gonna go with uh, coil unplug. So you you put these velocity stacks on? Yep. Originally, it's just a box. Oh, what a cool car! Thank you so much for showing us Thank your you. build. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, awesome to see the variety of cars here. It is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So good. So I was ogling your electric blue EM1, mm -hmm. and. Wow, I cannot believe how clean this thing is. Thank you. So what's the history behind it? When did you get it? Um, I got it about a year and a half ago. Um, I'd been looking for an EM1. I've had a couple in the past, even a right-hand drive at one point. But um, I was looking for another one to build. And a friend of a friend had this. It looked different, but he had it for a while, and I was kind of just waiting, kind of stocking it, <laughs> waiting for him to sell it. And then when he finally did, I 
I jumped on it first opportunity I could. What makes you like these? Like what, what drew you to this kind of car? It's just the EM1s to me, I just think they're special because they're only, you know, obviously two years they made them this body style. And I just, I love the body style. I love the way it looks and I just love it. Have you always liked Hondas? I've always liked Hondas. I've been into Hondas probably since before I could even drive. <laughs> That is super cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was saying on camera before you showed up that this really was like my high school dream car. Yeah. You know? It was of that era, right? but I couldn't ever imagine being able to afford one because right. of, Yeah, I hear that a lot. It was a new car, yeah. you know, and it was so expensive. They were pretty fancy when they first came out. Yeah, they, they were really cool. So have you done any modifications to it since you bought it? Yes, um, we converted it to five lug simply because I was specifically after these wheels, the Volk TE16s. They're like the OGs that came up for the TE37s. And I could only find them in five lugs. So we said, you know what? Just convert the car. <laughs> it's worth it. It looks so good. Thank you. I can't believe how good it looks. I mean, wow. <laughs> I appreciate it, that. It really sets off the, the blue too. I yeah, think. I like it with the original blue stickers they come with. And it's really crazy how the clearance for the caliper, did you plan that out? No, I mean, we, we tried to make it fit as best as we could. Yeah, it's a USDM Type R five lug conversion, the 32 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's really close. I know people always look at that. <laughs> so then does that mean you had to get a Willwood like Type R kit or something? Yeah, we had to get that for the five lug. Uh, and what about the interior? It's pretty much stock, huh? The interior actually is from an EK4 SIR. Oh. And I was on a hunt for the specific interior. I had found it out in California. I have the back seats and the side panels. We can't quite get them to fit, obviously, because it's from a hatchback. We're working on the door panels, though. <laughs> That's so cool that you're still massaging it. I'm trying to keep it stock, but it's like, you know, stock seats from a different. Oh, yeah, yeah plus, but special to you. Exactly, I love that. yeah. It's funny because I'm assuming when you're driving this around, like people that aren't into cars, they probably just think it's an old Honda, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, I get that a lot. When, even when sitting over there and eating, people are like, oh, you have a car in the car show, what is it? And I'm like, a Honda Civic. And they're like, oh. <laughs> but you know, to us, people that love Hondas, this is a special car. Yeah, when I when I, <laughs> when I I walk by, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe it's so clean. Oh my yeah, that's God. how it, I feel about and it. And also another thing is, very, very tastefully modified. Thank you, I like, appreciate that. I try so to keep tasteful. it clean. So then suspension, is that it? Yeah, it's a teen all? suspension. Okay. Yeah. Headers. Yeah. Just little Just simple. bits here yeah, and there. Yeah, it's the original motor. It's um, high mileage, but again, the original motor. Of the era. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I'm so glad you're the caretaker for this thing. Thank you. I and appreciate I'm, that. I cannot wait to see what else you're going to do to this thing. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's more to come for sure. Cool. Nice yeah. to meet you. You too. Thank you. Before I let you guys go, I just wanted to highlight our new tow setup now. So you guys have been watching all of our content on our Magnuson supercharged wide body Toyota Tundra build. But now we finally were able to secure an uh, enclosed trailer. It's all aluminum, it's from Intec, it's 24 feet, and it's honestly the dream trailer. So it does have this really nice wide door that allows us to load in and out super easy. And of course, since we are loading in the R32 GTR, I have to back it in in order to utilize that door. Normally with uh, left-hand drive cars, we could just pull in, but I'm really, really excited about this recent acquisition. It's something that I've wanted for so long and I've been looking on the market for one and we found a lightly used one that came out for sale in Central California and we just drove out to get that. So now we can actually go to the racetrack for time attack or for drifting or for whatever or in this case car shows because um, while the R32 would make it fine from California to Arizona uh, we did a eight hour drive last night from Willow Springs because we were actually doing a shoot there and there was a windstorm and it was just so bumpy I cannot believe how beat up the 10 freeway is between uh, California and Arizona 
So I don't suggest you drive your lowered car or lowered tuner car on that route, even though it would, it would make it fine, but it would just get so beat up. But I'm really, really excited about this setup. And honestly, towing with a lifted uh, Tundra on 37 inch tires, it might be an issue if it was stock. Um, maybe if it was re-geared, it'd be fine. But right now with the supercharger, oh my God, it's like the trailer's not even there. It, it is so nice. The trailer brakes are incredible. They stop really well. And um, it's honestly for me, just the dream setup. If Toyota did have um, a diesel truck, then maybe I would upgrade to that. I mean, I'm not against getting a Ford. I actually do have a Ford RV. That's what we use as our production RV and production vehicle. And we'll probably tow with that too, to some events, just so we have kind of like a, like a RV and then we're towing our garage, like that kind of combo. But uh, just kind of wanted to show you guys this setup. It's something that I've honestly always wanted. I'm just really excited to be able to enjoy cars this way as always future collector car show didn't disappoint this place is so awesome because not only do you get to check out this show you can actually walk all of the entirety of barrett jackson and all the auction cars unfortunately this year i didn't have a chance to do that because it's just so many cool cars here to feature and we're on a limited time schedule so uh we're gonna head back to la thank you guys for watching as always just wanted to thank our channel sponsors yokohama tire kw suspension pennzoil our major sponsor and of course type s lights every single one of my cars has type s led because why not see you guys in the next video Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.